one night, me and my wife were sitting on the deck and she's like, you know, this would be a very cool project. You really love these cars and you know them very well. This would be a very cool project if you were to restore this to a brand new condition or something very good. Honestly, there was no plan. I got the car and I just wanted to make sure that this car starts and drives. We want to return this car to the pursuit of perfection that birthed it, because that pursuit of perfection is not gone, but it's not to the same level that it once was. My name is Ahmed, I am the Car Care Nut. This is my 632,000 mile Lexus LS430. So one day on my lunch break at work, they're just sitting down, scrolling through cars and bids. This comes about and I just looked at it, the bid was very low. I was like, eh, let's put a bid and see what happens. Next thing I know, I go back to work and I look at the phone, notification, congratulations, you won the car. I'm like, what car? That was the literal moment where I went to look at the photos to see what did I get myself into. And uh, yeah, this is the car. You're sick of seeing the disgusting interior. I am. Here, we're gonna do an interior you've probably never seen before. So we're gonna start with them ripping out everything on the interior. And we're gonna clean every single surface of this car on the interior and then put it back together. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. And we're not working much on the exterior. This is just an interior. Yeah. We'll do the exterior at some other point, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Yes, sir. Let's get started. Let's get to it. The first thing I thought, like, this is this is cool. Like, you don't really see many cars with that many miles on them. So I was like, hell yes, this is awesome. I would love to do this. My first thoughts when I saw the car, it really wasn't that bad, but I've seen cars with less miles and way more damage on it. I mean, there wasn't any damage on the carpets, you know, just small damage on the leather, but just regular dirt and dust and, and some stains on the carpet and everything. And I'm like, cool, this should be easy. There's something special about walking up to a car that in your mind, you assume this is a very low mile, pristine, there's not a scratch on it, looks new on the inside, everything looks beautiful, smells nice, and then you look at it, it has 600,000 miles. Many people have told me, well, why don't you just go buy a very low miles, pristine example if you love this car so much? See, I work on these cars, I see the pristine example. It will not be to this level. This car is absolutely not worth 5% of the work we're putting into it. To me, it's the adventure, I think, of taking this car to the next level. Just having no limits. We're just gonna go all in and see what we come up with. As he pulled each piece out of the vehicle, it was amazing how much dirt and grime and dust and crumbs and cigarette ash was just in between the seats, the center console, every little crack and crevice is just packed full of just gunk. This is, this is what shocks me. Why is there, how does this get in there? Like, look at the bottom there. There's nothing, it's just a closed piece of carpet. We've done a couple details where we actually take some of the parts out of the vehicle, but this was the first time we actually removed the 
entire dashboard and the headliner and the sunroof and the back deck lid, all the speakers, the door panels. And I'm glad we did that because when you pulled out all that stuff off, like a lot of the musty, moldy smells that you smell in an older vehicle, you're smelling all the stuff that is, is down in the frame and stuff. So just being able to clean all that stuff was for me very exciting because I've never been able to take it to like this level. Most people have this rhetoric that's going on. They don't make cars like they used to. And you know what? It is true, but that doesn't make their current cars not good. They used to overbuild everything. Everything was just unnecessarily extremely overbuilt. You look at everything, we just tore this car apart. I work on newer cars. They're not built like this. The, even down to the plastic, down to how thick the carpet is, down to how things are bolted down. Everything that you normally will find one bolt, has four. Everything that normally has half an inch of insulation will have one inch of insulation. They just went extreme. This is probably the last big sedan from Lexus that was like that. I think Ahmed and his team went a little far. It's safe to say this is not your normal interior detail. We're doing a couple different things. So we're going to clean everything obviously because we're a detail shop. We're going a little further. We're actually going to be doing some restoration. We're gonna get started on this thing. I think I'm just gonna start by vacuuming all this crap up. We got ashes, we got crumbs, we got everything in here. We're gonna take it to the extreme. We're gonna clean everything. Can't wait. This is gonna be fun. That's behind the dash. Like, look at all this, like, all the dust and all of, like the dirt that is just built up. Look at this. That's the steering column. It just gets everywhere. Initially, when I looked at the car, you know, I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this by myself and probably have two or three days into it. But uh, once, once we got into it, it was a little different. We started on the interior, just started cleaning the frame. So I got in the car and started just scrubbing away. and. And that's when it kind of hit me, like every little part on that frame was dirty. So uh, vacuumed it up. Um, I think we're going to do a lot of scrubbing here. We got some damage on the seats, the center console and the steering wheel. We're actually going to bring that to a company, a trim company who is going to fix that. So they've ordered us some leather pieces and they're going to replace some of the panels and then we're gonna bring it back here. We're gonna fill some of the stuff and actually do leather repair to a lot of the stuff in there. But first, it's just a lot of cleaning. So we're gonna start with the frame in here. I'm gonna wipe down everything, uh, clean everything the best that we can. We gotta be careful with the connectors here. We don't got, wanna get anything wet into the electrical system. You gotta be very careful. It's not just take a pressure washer to it, even though I wish we could. I'm gonna get here with a couple spray bottles, a couple brushes, some air, and just clean this frame really well. Start cleaning the seats and all these individual parts. Little by little, we'll get this thing done. I'm gonna take everything out back here. Look at how corroded this wheel is. Looks like it's definitely been used before. I'm gonna call the uh, shop to make sure that they ordered everything. Hello, uh, my name is Jason. I was in there the other day with some Lexus uh, leather that we're looking to have repaired. And I want to uh, put down the deposit to order the vinyl. We are here. Oh boy. Look at all this stuff. I am so surprised that none of this opened up on the plane. I'm not even sure you're allowed to fly with this kind of stuff. Hey, did someone order some Geist? I called you this morning and you didn't answer. That's because I was on a plane. <laughs> he was legitimately surprised. He had a surprise face. Yuck. Why isn't it done yet? Gross. Yeah. Someone died in here. I do love an in-depth restorative detail, but this is like dashboard out. I'm impressed. 
big surprise, Eric showed up. So Eric, a home based out of Atlanta, who, who works for Car Supplies Warehouse, kind of surprised me. And it was an awesome surprise because he's been through several leather repair training. So I was happy to have him here for the few days to be able to mix the color and work on filling everything within the leather seats. And it was a good thing that he actually was there too because we had a clean all the the seats and everything that we're gonna bring over to get repaired. So it gave us an opportunity to clean all that stuff up before we brought it over to them so they could do their work and replace that. So Jason told me about this a little bit and he's like, yeah, we're gonna like redo the seats and re-dye stuff. So I was like, I'll just book a flight and we'll just load everything up and we'll do our best. This is what I thought you were doing yourself. That's why I came. Cause I was like, there's no way he's gonna try to tackle this himself. And I'm looking at the photo, I'm like, who are these guys taking the car apart? And I'm like, he got people. This is smart. We need a lot of brushes, a lot of cleaner, a lot of towels, a lot of masks. I feel better because I like I, I feel like we don't have to put it all back together. If we had to do that. It's funny too, because people are always like, yeah, my car smells. I don't know why. You look in all the nooks and crannies and you can see where all the dirt and grime has gotten behind all the panels that no one ever thinks about cleaning. All right. Yeah, what do you want to do? I don't know where to start. Well, I was just like, Jason, 200 hour restorative detail, Geist, fixing leather, replacing leather, Lexus, I'm just gonna come. <laughs> and here we are, I woke up at four in the morning, it's fine. You know, my plan was just to start cleaning the frame, so just cleaning dirt off of everything. And then obviously we need to do the leather repairs. Uh-huh. And then uh, like a lot of this stuff, like I want to polish all this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like clean this, polish it. I'm going to start cleaning stuff and try to restore stuff. If something is not going to be able to be cleaned right, we can tell them to buy it. Got it. That's what I told them. I'm like, let me, I think we can save these carpets because they, one, they clean really well. And I don't think they're that bad. Well, let's get the leather that's gotta go somewhere. And then let's get all the leather set up on some tables. Is, are they redoing all the seats? No, just what we tell them to do. Okay, because I think the passenger one is, they're gonna redo the padding in this seat. Oh, so kind of. This is kind of stretched out, there's no padding. Yeah. They said they can redo the padding and everything will be nice and tight. Oh, cool. Cause yeah, I mean, we can make this better. Are they redoing the whole driver's seat or only the panels that are back? They're only gonna do the panels. And are they matching the leather or we're painting it when it comes back? They're gonna match it, but we're still gonna have to paint the yep. whole thing. Well, I mean, we gotta clean rails, all this shit. Yeah. Man, I wish we had a Vario here. We got ice and we got the Vario at the other top. Yeah, we should get some. I mean, it's gonna save us hours in this shit. Yeah, we can go run and get it. Or we could just have Jesus bring it here. There we go. <laughs> Mm, yummy, look at that. So this is the driver's seat, and this is between the center console and the driver's seat. Everything there, just gross. I brought you a book. Now we're gonna learn how to repair leather. Page one. Leather is a natural material using tanned animal skin. I already know how to do this. We just started working. He was doing the seats, I was doing the frame. I think I went probably through 30 different microfiber towels, wiping everything, even looking up under that headliner. It was amazing to see all the dirt and everything piled up there. And this was a smoker's car, so a lot of the space, like you could literally see like where the yellow, all the nicotine that was just stuck, even on the frame, above the, the, the headliner, in the sunroof, in the frame of the top of that car. So just wiping that and cleaning it. It took, it took quite a while to do that. First little bit of love here.
Oh, I'm not as limber as I used to be. My legs are getting tired really fast. It's not just wipe it down real quick. There's a lot of cracks and crevices and shit on here that um, I need to get up. So I'm thinking this is gonna take me at least a couple hours just to clean this frame. I'm gonna clean the top here. And this is just like dusty. It's all like, you can actually smell the dust. Like when you're wiping it, you can smell it. where to go I like I clean over here then I see dirt over here I'm just like jumping all over the place it's hard to like work in a system at all with this I'm just glad another youtuber automotive based seems to appreciate this because I feel like usually this would be just skipped over on most channels. Are you done yet? This is too much, man. <laughs> You're not done yet? Not yet. Shit. Almost. I'm like a third of the way through this frame. Just a little bit at a time. The interior frame is looking pretty damn good. I'm gonna go over just a couple more spots with just wiping and everything. I still have the doors to do to get inside here. I glad air tears to uh, clean that leather. We're gonna load it all up and we're actually gonna bring it to the leather repair person to have them do it. But I think we're making pretty good progress. I mean, we got all this little shit over here on the rack that we gotta start cleaning. <laughs> this is an enormous job. I mean, I mean, that took me three hours just to do the interior frame we got the doors and everything else so all right so three hours in front seats are done we haven't got to the door panels the dash the trim we got the armrest the park got the wheel clean everything going to have the leather repaired um, is clean so they can see what we're working with on the back seat here we're going to town our choice product is the geist rapid and leather pro something to know about this product it does come with a pump sprayer and if you're using it with anything and really looking to deep clean we always want to foam and stay within the actual section of the leather. If you're using it in a red or a blue, or something, it could pull a little bit of color. It's a very, very strong cleaner, as you can see from what it's doing to this leather. It is safe, just be a little cautious. So I use a lighter brush to get the foam to kind of set up. And then my go-to is this little guy's handle right here. Keep a bucket of water handy to get all that gunk off of there and just keep rocking. It's kind of nice having everything out of the car. I don't have to worry about where the water is going. I know this is a multi-day, long-term project. We are going to recolor these seats. So I'm not worried or nervous at all about where the extra cleaner or the water is going. We're just trying to get these things clean. 600,000 miles of gunk. Once you get it clean, you're going to start seeing things that you thought maybe at one time were dirt. It's actually spots we're gonna have to fill and repair. Nothing that's gotta go to the upholstery shop or the leather trimmer or whatever you wanna call it. But if we just painted this seat, for example, we would see all of these little drag marks, this little weird check here. So we're gonna fill that up probably tomorrow morning. The dry ice machine has arrived. dry ice is a new cleaning process that uh, we're still working with and, and figuring out where it fits into the detailing industry. And it works great on um, a lot of engines or undercarriage stuff, hard to get to stuff. And this worked actually really, really well for the rails on the seat and under the seats. So we used that dry ice machine. We kind of blasted out all those rails and all that stuff that was like stuck in between there. And then Jesus uh, took a couple other parts too and just dry iced everything that he could. And that was a good uh, initial cleaning to get some of the stuff that it would be really, really, really hard to get. Can I do this side? Yeah. 
Yeah, this is a uh, perfect dry ice cleaner. Is this cleaning with your brushes and your, even your air would just suck. Hit this and see how it does. This is a challenge. <laughs> I don't know, do I just get in the trunk? There's a lot of, there's a big wire harness back here, so it's not like I can just spray it and vacuum it up on some parts but uh yeah it's a little there's a little more crap back here to uh deal with to clean all this little stuff and i think it's important to get all the dust and all that up i feel like uh we clean it and then we clean it again and then we clean it again and then we're halfway there and then we clean it again he's gonna help me on the trunk i'm gonna get the doors we're just getting all the panels together that we have to bring in for repair that repairable stuff? They're not gonna rewrap this whole piece. It wouldn't be economical. All right, so we're gonna repair this. This is the worst one. Okay. There's one where this has some cuts in it. All right, yeah, we wanna replace that then. So this one looks good. Big cut there, but that, that's fixable? Yeah, down by your belly button. Glue that back down, fill it. That's the plan. Do you think there's anything we can do about the fabric on the speakers? Yeah, we can replace it. We just have to find speaker fabric. Okay. And then this one the is... The same color. This one's okay. Not great. So I don't think we need to bring any of these? I don't think so. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we're gonna have our work cut out with this. Like this. That could be dry ice blasted. Yeah, yeah. look at that all that. There was suede in there, but it's gone now. Yeah, dry ice will do nice on that. Take a look at that. See that? All this. Oh, 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 oh! I'm hearing, I'm hearing trinkets. Oh, we had a smoker and a theft. <laughs> Smoking a pancake. He was using this as an ashtray. Look at that. That's not an ashtray. But this stuff too. You see how dull and scratched it is. So we're gonna clean that up and polish it but let's hit it with dry ice first to remove all this stuff. I'm gonna finish the frame and tomorrow we can start cleaning some of this, work on the carpets tomorrow. All this little stuff can be brushed out, cleaned. We can clear off this table a little bit and just start cleaning all that stuff over there. and polish it and then take a look. Now, hopefully it looks better. That looks brand new. A couple deep gouges in it still, but it looks a lot better. Did you see this bucket? I'm gonna go dump that out. I'll get him a new bucket. <laughs> Zeus. That was from the seats. You guys extracted them? No, that's just wiping them. How do we clean this? You can't get this wet because it's a motor. I think the dry ice will do a nice job. It's not. Wow. It looks dirtier. It is. So I thought someone hit it. Like, come on, come on. So we'll hit it, right? Cleans it great. Yeah. It spins the fan. The fan just spits it all back out. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I said it for like 10 minutes. Probably. Chop it up and then just yeah. leave it just there. Take this apart. There you go. Take right. it off. 
was cleaning this and, and there was so much crap within the fan here that it wasn't really doing anything. So we took it apart. Well, we didn't get to the carpets today, so we're gonna do those tomorrow. We got pretty far today. Um, we're doing some polishing on the interior trim. We're still cleaning a lot of little tiny pieces, uh, getting everything together. I know it looks like more in a mess than, it, than when we started right now, but I promise it's gonna start to get cleaner. Uh, we have to bring all the leather that needs to be fixed over to the interior trimmer. So we've loaded up the Tesla already, and we're gonna bring them uh, the front and the the two front seats, the, two, the driver and the passenger front seats, the center console, and we have that steering wheel. So hopefully uh, they can patch everything in, fix those big holes, and then we're gonna do our repairs of the smaller repairs on all the other seats and redye them, so. And that, that's gonna come right off the bat. Yeah, pretty much you can take all that. Here and here and foam in here, right, Jay? Yeah. Day number two. Uh, kind of got a late start. We had some meetings this morning, so it's the afternoon already. We dropped the seats off at, at the, uh, to get repaired for that leather. Unfortunately, they said it's going to take about two weeks. They're pretty booked up, but. Uh, she said she'll do the best she can on getting the seats at least started next week, but kind of puts a damper on the project because we were trying to rush and get this done for this week and put it together on Saturday. What they couldn't do is fix the steering wheel. They actually said it would cost probably six to $800 to sew the new leather on the steering wheel. So we did some quick research and found some uh, steering wheels on eBay that look pretty good that we can do just some small leather repair on. So I'm gonna order a new steering wheel from eBay that we can fix the leather, touch up, and re-dye. I think that's all that needs to be purchased right now. We're gonna work on the carpets. Eric's actually filling a lot of the door panels right now, so the process of repairing is we gotta fill all the damage, let that dry, sand everything, and then we can basically repaint it. It's a special paint that is made for leather and vinyl, and then we put a, a top coat on it, so, I mean, you can wash it. You can uh, sit on it, you can touch it, you can do all the things that you would normally do um, within car seats or, or, or whatever the interior is, and it's not gonna peel off, it's not gonna damage, so. There's so many parts, it was hard to know where to start. In my mind, I know that there was so much to do. I knew that I wanted to polish a lot of the veneers, the door panels, I knew we needed to, to do a lot of filling on the door panels. I knew we needed to mix paint and do all the, the re of all the surfaces in there, so it was kind of hard to kind of figure out where to start. And the carpets needed to be cleaned too, so we started just cleaning it away, getting a feel for it. Right now we're on the door panels. I got a lot of repair work to do, but first, we gotta get this nasty carpet pieces taken care of. Prior to getting into the carpet, we're gonna go over to the PNS Rennie Doyle Double Black Three Step. Uh, it's super easy. It's chemically balanced to work through the entire pH scale and really get a deep, thorough clean. So we got it in gallons, ready to use pints, and then also with the secondary bottles to make everything efficient and legal. So step one, we're gonna jump in right here on the door panel with our Terminator Enzyme Spot and Stain Remover, nice and labeled, step number one. So we get in here, we're gonna notice that we have a lot of small staining, nice big spot here. You can tell where they've kicked it with their feet. We've already blown this out, gave it a quick vacuum. So we're gonna come in here and just let the chemical start to do its thing. Now we've already tested it. We're gonna work on this fabric on the speaker grill. We may have to replace it. We're not sure yet. We're gonna use a coarse brush on the carpet, but on the speaker grill here, we're gonna use this softer work stuff brush just to try to start the agitation. You can see as I'm using the brush, it's got sort of that soft movement to it. So we're getting in under the fabric. It's already worn down a little bit. We're gonna see if we can work some magic with that once we get it clean. But we can't fix or do anything until we get it clean. So historically, I feel like detailers would just go at this with an all-purpose cleaner maybe a degreaser or something along that line, or just a single step carpet shampoo. And what they don't realize is they're leaving a lot of the chemical behind, no matter how much they extract a pressure wash out. So what's nice with the system is the guys over there at PNS 
have worked with the chemistry to allow each step to almost pause or stop the chemical process in the step before. Now some would say that that's done, but we're gonna go through the entire process because I know a little bit. And as I'm an equal fan of step one, Finisher has really changed the way I take care of carpets, mostly tans and browns because whatever magic is in that really gets the browns looking new. So that was step two, Carpet Bomber. Definitely a citrus-based product based on the smell. Just gonna go in, it's gonna start to attack any of those stains or deposits that Terminator is not built to. So also foams quite a bit for the foam nuts out there. Using the three-step, what's really nice, with it being chemically built for each other, is you can allow for a much longer dwell time and not have to worry about any issues. Now, I've, cheating here, I've already cleaned the first three. I left the best for last. So I kind of knew what the results were gonna look like. Just stacking the product, one, two, three, quick, 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 not trying to waste too much time letting them dwell together. We're also gonna upset the viewers in a second. Step three, again, this has been my brown saver. This is finisher. Goes in and stalls all of that chemical from reworking if it ever was to get wet. But the last thing you want is a week from now, your customer calls you and goes, hey, that big nasty stain came back. Can you redo it? It's never fun. The system really helps eliminate that. The real fun is gonna be the, the actual carpet of the car, but seeing what the system has done on just the door panels, which are the same material, I'm confident. Jason asked if we could replace the carpet on the door panels, and the system really saved us from doing that. We've been looking at some of the interior parts on eBay. They're available, they're not inexpensive. So we're really gonna try to save anything and everything we can save here. So we can see here, we still got a good amount of chemical in there. So option one, extract it. Option two, let's hurt some feelings. Now we're gonna be very careful here in the wash bay with our door panel. There are some electrical switches up on the top here. There's no speaker in here. We do have some jute and some matting back here that we still have to clean, but I'm pretty confident in just coming in here and blowing all that chemical down. And if you don't like it, don't have me detail the inside of your car. And that's okay. Just compressed air. And the final step. Mother Nature and her son. I would call this sort of the prep and the glue stage. So we're just getting everything ready for filler. A little mix of cutting, opening it up, sanding. Feels like we're going backwards prior to going forwards, but it's just the way it goes sometimes. So bringing back out our Geist. The Geist does a really good job of making some high quality flexible fillers with a few different colors. It's always good to get the color as close as you can prior to trying to paint. So we are gonna go with the light tan. A little bit goes a very, very long way. For the body guys out there, think of this as your, as your body filler. This is just gonna be a, a long, tedious process, but we're just erasing, like we've said a million times, 600,000 miles of Lexus wonder. Not sure we're ever gonna be able to get this to lay flat again. Who knows how long ago the damage was but it's gonna look better than a flappy piece of leather. All right. Oh, Lord. I forgot about this one. Is this when it's supposed to get fun? Just trying to see where its natural position is. That one's gonna be a pain in the ass, Chris. Yeah, that doesn't really wanna go back together. 
Not really sure this is a great plan of attack. A tedious process. It's gonna take a hot minute. The content cement wants to hold it. It just doesn't want to stay in spot. So we'll leave that there and we'll fill it later. All right, so step one, we clean the seat. Step two, we're gonna come in here and yes, you can sand leather. We're just gonna sand the surrounding area real quick, knock down any high spots. We're gonna degrease prior to applying the filler because you want to apply it to something that's clean. It's also gonna give you a nice look at your work. We'll take our easy filler. Make that disappear. A lot of the time, you don't always have to fill. You just cut it down enough, the paint's gonna do a little filling. Look at this little nasty. It's like everywhere you look, it's just not cool. It's kind of fun when you think you have a crack and it ends up being a hair. I mean, it looks better than it did. We cleaned the carpets. Initially, I didn't want to pressure wash it. I was just going to try to spray the top surface, uh, drill brush it, and then extract it out. Eric quickly changed my mind on that, and uh, I'm really g glad that we pressure washed it because there's just so much dirt and grime into the bottom of the carpets there. So the only really way to get all of that out was to pressure wash it. You never be too man enough to read the instructions. But this is uh, officially in testing. You're able to adjust your foam up here, which is kind of cool. And Carpet Bomber happens to really like foam. So we are gonna play with it in this. They're really strong. Ugh. All right, that's embarrassing. Jason! <laughs> What's the first step, man? Let's vacuum this bitch. So this is, we're dry cleaning at this point. Yes. Step number one. Hey, we have a treat for you. Ah, product testing. It should be set to your liking. It foams. Not only does it foam, you can select it from dry foam to wet foam based on the product with a dial right here. So right now it's in the middle. It liked the middle over there. This is step number two, by the way, which is carpet bomber. More of a degreaser that'll ta attack greases. Hence the name Degreaser. <laughs> you know what I'm surprised about? No like spilled coffee. Right. Like, there's no isolated spot of it. Right. Now this is just me. I like after the second step to rinse it all out. Yeah. And then go with finish. Yeah. All right. We gotta move these tables. Tea or coffee? Making what? Are you making tea, coffee, or a milkshake? It's more of a milkshake. I don't know, 
I've done this like 65 times and it, it's only given me great results. I think you just gotta be smart about it. Like, don't put this back in the car today. I don't know, like. You gotta be ready by like in the morning, right? No. No, I'll be ready by the time the seats come back from the upholster in two weeks. <laughs> With it being 105 degrees outside. You wanna do step three now or you wanna wait for it to dry? Look, I say we, right, let's hose it now, rub it in. This stuff is magic on brown. I must just wanna like pour it on. This is gonna take forever. Why didn't you get one of those fancy prayers for that stuff? We have the solo ones, but you don't like the solo ones because they have the cone on them. Let's try them. What the hell's that? From the trunk. Gross. What do you think it weighs now? Ah, oh, about tree pity. Remember when I said the foam wasn't gonna absorb water? I lied. That pad got wet, of course. We knew we had the car for at least a week, so we put it out in the sun, and that had plenty of time to dry. Well, I think it's safe to say that this is the part that separates the men from the boys. However, You've been through at least 0.71 classes. I've been through at least like 1.4 classes. So I think combined, we can make this happen. If not, we can phone a friend. But first and foremost, we gotta finish getting some stuff clean and we have to repair that nasty tear. We are on leather repair. So the first step is mixing the paint. We gotta get the color to match these seats. So we got the headrest here. We're gonna match the color and then we are also filling at the same time. So we're filling some of the damage, some of all the scrapes on the seat. And then we have an actual patch repair. So we have a bigger tear within the back of this seat here that we gotta fix. So we're gonna mix the paint, find the exact color and we'll show you the process. This is cool with guys to be able to do this. If we're painting something, they're like, oh, is it gonna peel? Is it gonna do this? But like, this is a long-term solution. Oh yeah, yeah, I this mean. This isn't just like, spray it on and then be careful because it might peel. Yeah, and like, unlike. You can sit in it, you can walk, you can clean it, you can scrub it, you can do all those things. What we're doing here is this is a little more in depth, right? So we're using the cross linker, which is like an activator. Right, we're gonna use the primer, we're gonna use the top coat, we're not gonna do the all-in-one solution that we showed in the last video, which I'm excited for, but also terribly scary. Okay, we have two different colors that we have to mix, so the first step is just, we need the right color, so we need, actually need to clean it. Absolutely, so I mean, even though the, everything here has been cleaned at least no less than twice, this thing has 600,000 miles of love. Yeah. And it, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's showing it. Like this is, I'm trying to like forensically figure out what happened here? Like, was someone sitting here and then they got attacked by a knife and come through their shoulder the whole time? Getting ready for this, I did some research in color theory, which we don't really have to get into too much because I am no expert, but Geist gives you this color wheel, which we'll see more of when we start working. Color theory is your primary colors, right? Which is your red, your yellow, and your blue, which we have here. Red, So yellow, what's kind of cool is these are the only three you need. Everything else in the line, because you can have all these colors, like we have Havana and ochre here, right? So there's ochre. It's just more of an orange yellow, but it is just either a primary mixed with a primary to make a secondary, or a primary and a secondary mixed together. So we have violet, we don't have violet here, but if we mix blue and red, we get purple. Yeah. We don't have green. If we mix blue and yellow, we get green. So to save on traveling with liters full of paint, um, I brought the primaries and then I brought the guesses as a base to kind of start with, okay. which would be pretty cool. So let's go over the steps first though. So it's cleaning it to get a clean spot. So just like anything else, it's your prep, right? But what do you clean it with? So like? I'm using Rapid Pro from Geist, which is their okay. orange cleaner. So this has already been cleaned with Rapid Pro. Yeah. Um, then we're gonna hit it with their plant-based degreaser, just as like a last 
ditch effort, effort to make sure that everything's off the surface. Because yeah. what we don't want to do and why we chose a headrest is it is high enough in the car to get all the UV that the car would see throughout its life, but it's really not a wear area, okay. right? So we want to take a headrest and mix to the headrest because that means we're going to be right throughout. Like you opened up the armrest, for example, we wouldn't want to match to this color, even though it started out as this color and this color, but we don't want to match to this because this has been sitting away from UV for the last 20 plus years. So we want to make sure that we're getting a good sample to actually mix with. We also like headrests because they are a little bit larger. We're going to be doing a lot of guessing. So you're going to be putting small amounts of the paint on to get the color right. Gotcha. And then you can just use Rapid Pro to remove it. It's not a permanent until we add the activator. Also, third thing with a headrest, the viewers, if they want to tackle something like this, they can send us a headrest and we can mix the paint for them. Okay, so the paint that we're actually gonna mix, we're actually putting a layer over that, which is kind of a clear coat then? Same thing, yeah. So we're gonna prime, paint, and clear coat. No different than what you would do on a car. I mean, it is special paint. I don't know enough about it to talk about the formulation and, and, and why it, you know, it is not automotive paint. It is not watercolor or you can go and paint your, you know, like a picture with it. Right. You could, but it's expensive. It is, it is formulated for leather. Okay. which is super cool. Well, there was actually one piece on the back seat that we had to, there was a cut, a slit, so you actually had to put a piece of fabric back there and then glue everything because you just can't fill it. That filler has nothing to hook onto. So filler comes in many different colors. This one just happens to be tan. Uh, just kind of cool, like in the body world, right? If you're, if you're gonna paint a white car, don't use black primer or black filler unless you're looking dark in the color. Same thing with this is, you know, if we put a white in there, and you missed over it a little bit with the tan, it's gonna look a lot lighter. You put it black in there, it's gonna look a lot darker. This is kinda of right in the middle of tan. So this is gonna take many, many coats, but we're just gonna dab that in there, get a little, little bit running up that crack there, and then you just wanna look this, scrape that and level it with the spatula. Very nice. And then we just start working identifying what we want to fix, and you just start going crazy with your foot. Also, if you have any pieces that are flaking, like if anything is like cut open, so you can glue it down. I'm not a huge fan, like on the door panels we're working on. Um, I actually would just cut that piece of top coat almost off and then just use the filler. Looking good, we gotta let this dry and then we'll sand it and fill again. But I think uh, we're ready to mix some paint so we have uh, the right color. That afternoon we got on the phone with Ram who is the owner of Geist Leather Care and uh, we had to mix the paint. It took a while to get the paint perfect and this is the hardest part of doing leather repair is just getting that paint to match. So you, you gotta have the right sheen to it. You gotta have exactly the right color. It did take a couple hours to get those colors matched though and to have the right pigment uh, for the dye that we're gonna spray. Yo. What's up, what's up? All good. There he is. Hey buddy. Hey, man. So we got okay. the the trim is this like brownish gray, and then the leather is like would you call this a medium to light tan, right? So we got white, red, blue, yellow, ochre, and Havana. That's going to be about fifty percent, fifty to sixty percent of white. But don't start with white yet. Just start with a little bit of ochre. How many ounces of paint are we going to use on this entire big body Lexus? Uh, you should you should be okay with about 500 milliliters. Okay. Nice. Just go with like uh, 10 mil ochre. 10 mil of ochre. That's not a lot. So we start by just mixing a little bit first and getting yes. the color. Yeah. So you're working out what colors more or less. Are. What 10 mil of ochre, check. Three mil of blue. Three mil of blue. Talk to us with what's going on in your brain. So when you mix those two, you'll get a shade of green. 
because it's yellow-ish and then blue. Then to cancel out the green, you're going to need a little bit of red, just a, a tiny drop. Mix it up, so then you want to work out how green you are in comparison to the sample. We are, um, what'd you call that, Jason? Puke green. We are officially puke green. Not close. Okay, so at this point, add a few drops of red. Got red, red. So just a little baby drop of red? Yeah. Because if you put too much red, you're gonna turn it into brown. Okay, we got a grassy puke now. But I can see, I, okay, I can see where you're going with it. Just look, 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 look. Mmm. Okay, now just try and add some white to it. So you probably got, what, about 25 milliliters? Yes. 25 milliliters of white. That's what you're going to Are you ready for it, Ram? Oh, moment of truth. Jason, heat gun, please. That's too okay, right? So we gotta put in blue. Yeah. What are we talking, like two little drops? Two to three, yeah. This is the point where you've gotta be quite precise. Once you get to this stage, right, you can now increase the volume, because you've now got an idea, more or less, of what paints you use. Just need a little bit more blue, and at some point, I think you might, you might need a drop of black in it just to level it out completely. Still really light. Okay, so we probably just added too much white there. So the next time when you mix, like, you want to put less white than what you started out with. So where we added equal parts, we almost added one is to one of white, you want to reduce that. You want to put maybe just 25% white. Add like 10 mils of ochre. To this now, yeah. Yeah, it's still way too ochre. Blue? Blue. Blue. Whoa, that went green. It's all right, we got red. Too green, but close. Some more red. Yeah. It's a little brown. So now we got this. It's hard to see, but it's a little brown. No, change your angle. You're making the beautiful purple milkshake. Pour it in there. It's a little too red, yeah. So now we got enough paint in there. Now we need to like fine tune it, right? We are really brown. Before you add blue, just test that out. See if that gets it close enough. I think we need more white. Getting closer, but still too brown. Getting somewhere. Still a little too dark. It's a golden yellow. It's more of an orange now. A tiny shade lighter. Still has a yellow tinge. I'm gonna mix up some pink. Just a tiny bit yellow, that's it. We're painting the whole thing so it doesn't have to be an exact match. A little more black, maybe? Yeah, Ram. Good? That's, that's it. it. I think so. That's it. The same thing in both the cups? Yep. Man, it's just not easy to mix paint through Screen. It's also not easy to pour paint when you don't have a funnel. Um, I just got a call from the interior repair lady. <laughs> She's like, actually, we started yesterday and we might be done tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's great news. The steering wheel, we ordered a used one, same color, and it just has a little bit of leather repair that we can do to it. So we're gonna do that leather repair on that steering wheel that we got, uh, but I think that was uh, around 300 bucks for that steering wheel, so. We're actually mixing the paint right now, and we got the perfect color, 
So uh, we're putting it into bottles and we're touching everything up as far as any of the rips or tears or little punctures. So those are all getting repaired and then we're gonna go ahead and paint some of these parts. So we got the perfect color, perfect match. It took us about, uh, I'd say about 25 tries, but we got the perfect match. I'll give you a better update uh, tomorrow afternoon though. What a nice surprise. That means we gotta get this shit done. <laughs> Round two. Oh, we got another piece. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Okay. Is that like more gray or more brown? More brown. More brown? Yeah. Why don't you just test some Havana directly on it with a sponge? Orange. Do you want it to be lighter or darker? Though? Darker. Try some black. Throw a little black and throw a little blue. Throw a little red in there. You need white. Way too dark, way too brown. Oh, hey, we're getting back on track a little bit, I feel like. Just a little too light. It almost looks like it's just too shiny. Oh, okay. Have you got the, the dollar? I got dollar. Black and dollar. Little bit darker. There it is. Got it? Yep, we're done. That's spot on. Who am I looking? That's it. That's she spotted it. She gone. Perfect. Plans have changed because they just called and they have the seats done tomorrow for us, which is fantastic because they told us two weeks. So I was thinking we were gonna like milk this car a little bit and put it in the corner and just, it's 105 degrees today. I thought we were just gonna take it easy, but we're gonna have to work. I was glad to have Eric here for the couple days, but he on the third day, he actually had to go. He had to go back home. So it was up to me to get everything put together, finish all the filling, put everything together. So I came in actually on a Saturday when nobody else was here because uh, we do have to do some painting and I didn't really want to paint everybody out. It just start blowing paint all over the place. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was in a separate area where I wouldn't, you know, do any damage to anything else. Lined up everything on all the tables just to get everything, you know, lined up and, and get a an idea of what I have to do. So you can see a couple replace panels there. And then you remember the big uh, rip in the side of this bolster. They actually repadded both the seats so they filled them up. This is the driver's side and this is the passenger side. This one was almost all the padding was gone in that driver's side seat. So they fixed it, but you can see it's a pretty good match, but the old leather is dingy, dirty, and it doesn't look good. These are really bad. We can't find replacements for these, unfortunately, so we're gonna <laughs> fill in sand the best we can. These are not gonna look great after we're done, but it'll look better than what it is now. So the game plan is to fill sand and spray, but this is gonna look so much better. I can't wait for you guys to see the before and afters on these. Whew. So I'm gonna start in one section, literally just clean my way down. I'm gonna have to tape a lot of this stuff up to make sure I don't spray anything that's not going to uh, be the same color. This is a lot of work. This is going to be over two days here, so. We are now going to sand. It is now time to prime. So I'm gonna fill the gun up with the primer and then spray everything because we're doing a complete coverage. I'm gonna spray everything with the primer to make sure that we get a super good bond.
we got to spray everything there and then Chris kind of came behind me with the heat gun to be able to do layers. So you have to do multiple layers on this. So we went through and we did the primer. So first you want to do the primer because we're doing big spots and a lot of the repairs. We want to make sure that the pigment is going to attach itself to everything that we're doing. So Chris came with the heat gun. We did that, did two layers of that on everything, came back with the pigment, and I did at least a minimum of two layers on most everything. Some of it had three or four in some of the damaged spots that we had a lot of filler. I wanted to make sure everything was covered and everything was good. All right, so we're gonna clear and uh, we mixed a matte and a gloss clear together, mostly matte because we want it to look matte. And then we have this cross linker that we're gonna put in there and that's gonna harden it. So I have eight fluid ounces here and this needs to be 2%. How many mils is that? Ah, we'll get the calculator. 4.8, so five mils of this cross linker. On any leather, there is a type of coating on there to protect that pigment and make sure that leather is going to last long. So the same thing here. So we mixed up the clear coat. There's a couple different products you got to mix in there. There's a hardener that you put in that activates it. So the clear coat can actually harden on the surface too. So again, we did the same thing. We went around, sprayed everything. Chris followed me with the heat gun and heated everything up. And then we did two layers minimum on everything. And I went a little further on some of the repairs we have just to make sure. And after 24 hours, we were able to put a dye and friction blocker so this is protecting on top of the protecting so that clear coat that we put on there will make that repair durable so you can clean it you can sit on it you don't have to worry about it flaking or anything like that but the dye and friction blocker kind of makes it a little smoother so when you're getting in and out you know you don't have that friction on the pants and then it's a dye blocker so anything with blue jeans and everything not gonna have to worry about that with that product on there you know we took actually a couple days off so the leather repair company called us and actually said that they may have it done that week so I kind of got excited like we might actually be able to do this in the week because Ahmed wasn't able to come in the next two Saturdays and so I was like well let's see if we can get it done we can pick up the seats we can get them painted let's see if we can actually get this done we we're gonna try to rush it and it just didn't feel right. We didn't even have the steering wheel yet, and I didn't want to rush stuff, and I know that we had just a lot to do, and I didn't think that we were gonna be able to get it done, so I let them know, like, I don't think we're gonna be able to get this done in time for you to come and uh, put it together back on Saturday. Labor Day was coming, so that was a holiday on that weekend, and so we decided let's just do it the week after Labor Day, which gave us a couple weeks to be able to do this. So I came back after a couple days, and got back on it. And this is where we did a lot of the trim pieces. Me and Chris kind of just sat down at a table and, and had some time-lapse stuff of, of taking all this stuff apart. And we had somebody initially clean these parts for us a little bit and then sat down at a table, use the screwdrivers to undo all these parts and to remove the veneer faces and then just clean all the little cracks and crevices. A lot of the stuff, it was easier just to bring over the pressure washer and we use air and a microfiber to dry it and then I could polish that front veneer and, and get it as good as I can. Now, they weren't perfect. There was a lot of deep scratches, especially in the center console area where somebody must have just been set and stuff. So uh, it looks a lot better. They look glossier, but you can still see some minor scratches. There's only a certain amount of clear on top of those, so it's not like I can sand them down and then polish them so I don't want to damage them you know, by polishing them too much, but certainly got them looking a lot better. That too is just like, you know, looking at the baker's rack of every single little piece. You start doing a couple pieces. Some of the pieces took you know, 40 minutes, each one. You take it, you take it apart, you clean every little crack and crevice on there, you polish it out, you put it all back together, you put it up on the baker's rack. That was 45 minutes. Next one, okay. And there's just hundreds of pieces just laying around here that we have to clean. 
I came in on the weekend again. We were closed. It's, it was just nice to be able to be here without all the chaos of the shop going on. I came in and used the prep bay and I pressure washed all the fabric stuff. So the back deck lid, all the little carpet areas, and then actually the side molding pieces, which are fabric too, which were kind of damaged. And I don't know exactly what Ahmed was going to do with them. So I figured I'd just clean them anyways. And if he wants to replace them down the road, he can certainly do that, but I just wanted to get them clean. The deck lid was one of the grossest things uh, in the car. I couldn't believe it. I don't know if somebody spilled something up there or what was up there, but like it was so nasty. That one piece, that took a half hour to clean because I had to clean it several times. I had to scrub it. I actually put it to dry, came back a half hour later. Some of the stuff actually went back up into the fabric. So I had to bring it back to the table and re-clean it, re-pressure wash it and everything just to make sure everything was out. The last thing that we actually did was respray all the kick panels and then the, the gear shifter. So the the gear shifter was pretty damaged with the leather. In hindsight, I should have actually brought it to the leather repair person to see if they could have done anything about it, but we forgot it here. I filled it, I glued it, I did a couple different things. I polished the wood on it, I taped it all up, I sprayed it and then sanded it. I just didn't like the look of it. I tried to refill it again after I sanded it and it just didn't look right. I was kind of frustrated, you know, like I'm spending this time, I'm sanding it, I'm doing all this stuff to try to make it look a little bit better. Then you spray the paint and it just like, it didn't look at it at all. Like you could see all the filler spots, they were flat. It was almost shiny looking. Resanded everything. I took that gear shifter handle. I pulled off all the filler. I did it like three or four times, like, cause I was frustrated and I just wanted to make it look good. And uh, actually the day that Ahmed and his team were coming to do this, I came here early that morning and re-sprayed it and everything and pulled the tape off and it just looked like garbage. And you know, it didn't look good at all. He came in and I told him about it. And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, I already got a new one. It's all wood. And I'm like, <laughs> Wish you would have told me that earlier, man. I spent a lot of time on that thing and uh, a lot of frustration, but I'm glad he got a new one because I would have been embarrassed for that to be on that car and the way it looked. Like there was just nothing I could do about it. So I met his team and his crew came in and it's just amazing to watch him work. I've taken a couple cars apart and usually end up with a pile of bolts that are left over that I didn't know what to do, but like he's done it so many times and just to watch him put everything back together. He knows what everything is. Like he knows the bolts before he even puts it in. He's like, yep, I know where this goes. And he just he goes to it. Basically, the dash is fully assembled. All we got is just some trim and garnish and whatnot. The carpet's gonna go in next. And once the carpet goes in, we're gonna start assembling the back shelf. We have new, all new speakers. We're gonna assemble them. Everything will all of a sudden start coming to look like a car. Right now, it doesn't look like much of a car, but I am so happy how this is turning out. Let's get back to work. Make this look like a car again. You know, 95 times better. I mean, for a 600,000 mile car, just like, it looks awesome. So I, I wanted to touch up some. So I touched up a little things to here. We polished some of the veneers that I wanted to be a little more perfect, made sure the carpets were perfect, make sure everything is wiped down, the glass. So this is a funny story. With the car being in here, we planned on doing some window tint too. So I talked to the guys. I'm like, hey, we're gonna have this car for a couple weeks. If you guys can find some time to replace the window tint. But what I didn't realize, in order to do window tint, you have to roll the windows down. And I let them know, yeah, just the keys are on there. Just roll the windows down, take all the old tint off, put it back on. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking because it didn't even have a dashboard in it. There was no place to even put the keys. So after everything was back together, and we could turn the car on, the, the tinters were able to do the tint the next day.
Afterwards, we actually did an odor bomb because even though we cleaned everything we could possibly clean, some of those foams inside of the seat, being a smoker's car still smelled. So we did an odor bomb in there. It smells much, much better. Just wiped down the dash, put some protectants on the dash and everything. It was a really special project to do. This is the fun part of the job because the day in and day out of doing the same car over and over, this is a new challenge for us. And it was super fun and I'm glad that Ahmed and his team invited us to do this on this project, just to take it and see how far you can actually go. And the results were amazing. Ahmed, I hope you loved the car, man, because I had a lot of fun doing it. The satisfaction just seeing the transformation from what it was to what it is now was just amazing. So Ahmed, the team, thank you for having Chicago Auto Pros uh, a part of this and I hope you drive it another 300, 400,000 miles and I hope we get to see it back when it has a million miles on it.